Hey guys, I'm about to uh, put in a new EPI clutch kit on my RZR1000. It's a four-seater 2015. I've been having a lot of jerky starts and um, just not great engagement. And then not a, I wanted to go ahead and get the improved clutch kit to get that inc increased power band. So I'm going to take you through that. I went with the EPI kit. I heard a lot of good things about the Dalton kit as well, but I knew that I wasn't going to be making that many adjustments to the kit, so I thought I'd go with a more straightforward one, less things to actually go wrong with it in the long run. Um, so this EPI kit includes the springs, a, a new helix, and also the new, the new weights. So um, we'll go through taking off the primary clutch and the secondary clutch. We will put on our, our new gear and then get that back up. Uh, a couple of things that I got. I also just grabbed a, a new G-Force belt, the uh, primary clutch pulling tool, the clamp to clamp down on the clutches um, to counteract that spring force, and then also the EPI kit here. So uh, looking forward to getting this new kit on. We'll go for a test drive afterwards and let you know how I like it. All right, so we've got it jacked up now. I'm going to loosen the bottom portion of the shock here so we can swing this up and out of the way, which will give us easier access to the primary clutch there. All right, I took this bolt out on the bottom. I just lifted it up, swung it to the side. I'm gonna set it here on the tire so I can get access in here. I'm gonna loosen this pipe clamp, go around and loosen each of these bolts on the clutch cover. All right, so we've got the cover off. You can see the primary clutch and the secondary here. I'm not going to worry about taking off the belt right now because that'll just come off with the clutches. So right now we need to loosen this bolt here and then this guy. Um, because this whole primary clutch would want to spin as I'm loosening this, I'm going to put a big uh, rod right through here. So we're just going to slide that in there. Make sure you don't go through this portion where there's stuff you could damage. Go through these larger portions and not through the middle where there's a spring. Um, so just right through there should be fine. I've just got to support it up against uh, this engine mount. We got this out. Make sure you don't lose these two washers on the end. All right, so this is the clutch puller tool that I have. This one is a Tusk brand. Basically, you just thread this in. There's some threads here. Uh, we'll just thread it in by hand. And then once that's nice and snug, we'll go ahead and start tightening down on this, which will then push against the crankshaft and pop this off. Um, it may come off nice and smoothly. We may end up with a nice loud pop as this clutch comes off of here. So we'll go ahead and we're gonna thread this in. Slide this guy out. It did his job. Pull this out of here. Pretty dirty. We'll get that nice and cleaned up as well. But there it is. Primary clutch. So the secondary ended up being a lot tougher to get loose than I was anticipating. I wasn't able to effectively hold it. I tried putting the belt even on it to uh, try being able to hold onto that. What I found to work the best took a screwdriver and I lodged it up under one of these splines here and then just up against the bottom of my frame here, which allowed me to then pull against this, which would then just force right into the screwdriver. I was finding that if I put the screwdriver up into here, I didn't push very hard, but it's pretty soft there versus this it felt a lot more sturdy and I was able to get it out that way. It was pretty tough for me. Um, but didn't break anything. Um, just had to pull really hard and have something here to keep this from spinning. All right, there we go. There's the secondary. Get that cleaned up and see if it's in good shape as well. All right, so I got both the clutches off. Got them sitting over here, about ready to start doing some of the EPI clutch kit install. Um, but I did notice also when I took this belt off, there's um, there's a tear here and some uneven wear. So good time to be replacing this anyways, so I'm glad I ordered a new one. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and clamp down on the primary clutch and get that taken apart. Um, I went ahead and purchased this. It's a, a clamp that you mount in your vise and then the size of this here, first you slide your, your clutch over the thread and then this presses down on your clutch. So it removes the pressure of the spring for you to remove the cover and everything. 
Um, they're kind of ridiculously priced, but it's going to save you a lot of time doing this. So I'm going to grab one so we'll get to mount it up. And the vise. So we're going to take this. I'm going to take these, these top bolts out of here. Here, and I'm going to go ahead and slide this over. Get this clamped down. All right, so I'm just going to tighten this down, and I'm going to go ahead and take these bolts out of here, um, and then we'll um, go ahead and loosen this top and lift the whole top portion off. ahead and loosen this up. Before I do this actually, I'm going to make a mark on here and here so then I know that um, how to line this up when I put it back on. There we go. There we have it, got that all taken off and you can see it's really dirty. So we're gonna get that all sprayed out um, and cleaned up as we are replacing these parts as well. All right, so we've got the top spring off now. Um, we're gonna go around and replace these weights here. So we're just gonna take out this little bolt. So not here you can see they, aren't, they don't need to be tight so we aren't gonna tighten these all the way back down. Um, so we're gonna take these out, get the new weights that are supplied put back in We'll put the new spring in, and then we can go ahead and put the top back on. So we can slide this out now. And this is the weight that we'll be replacing. Still a little stiff, but not as bad. All right, there it is. All right, these are all through. I'm going to go through and put these little nuts on there. Again, we don't have to tighten these down super far. So we got all these in, and again, you don't have to tighten them up a whole lot. You should be able to still move them. Um, you can see our weights move freely, which is what we're looking for. All right, so just drop my spring in, make sure that it sits down in there nicely. Um, and I'm going to put the top line. Remember, I put these two X's on here to make sure that lines up with the way it came off of here. So I'm just going to go ahead and lower that in there, and now I'll go ahead and clamp this down once more. Alright, and I'm going to go ahead and tighten these guys down. Just tighten them by hand first, and then get them nice and snugged out. Should be good to go there. Go ahead and loosen this up. Right. That off of here. So now we put in our new spring and we have our new weights all the way around. Now I'm going to do something real quick. I'm going to go ahead and drop this right back on here. And I'm going to scuff up the gloss that's on here um, using some of this Scotch-Brite. Um, so we aren't trying to put any any scoring in it, but just enough to, um, to give the belt something to grip on. All right, so now I'm just going to go in and I'm going to do a cross. And rotate. Do that on the other side as well. We'll just put this on here. Next, I'm going to take some brake cleaner rag, spray some of this on there, and then give it a nice wipe down. Alright, so now that does it for the primary clutch here. Now we're going to shift over to the secondary clutch and get that one all set up. Okay, so on the secondary here, I can immediately see that these rollers have been flattened on one side. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and run over to Polaris dealership and buy some of these. They're actually kind of pricey. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open it up now. 
to see if there are if I need to do the internal ones or just these two external ones because there's four of these rollers total, two on the inside, two on the outside. So um, to get into there, we're going to take this plate off, these four screws, and uh, we'll get that taken off. So I'm going to slide this back onto here, and you can use the same clamp for this. Um, it's also a good idea to heat these screws one at a time because they've got some Loctite on there. So we'll heat one up at a time and uh, take that off and then we'll pull up. Alright, so I've got this pulled off. You see this is the stock Helix that we'll be replacing with the one supplied by EPI. Um, I did, if you take a look into here, you can see that these rollers look just fine. So I'm not going to worry about replacing them. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and put the clamp back onto here so we can relieve some of the pressure from the spring and we can then take this snap ring off of here and then we can pull everything out and get the new spring in there. Go ahead and make a mark on this shaft here in line with this so that when I put it back on it'll be a little bit easier. Um, this way the splines will line up and I won't have to fight that as I clamp it back down on. Alright guys, so I got stuck here trying to remove this snap ring here. I had a snap ring wrench here. Um, I had tried it. I, I was honestly on it for hours trying to get this off. I went and got another one from an auto parts store. They're just so flimsy and this is a pretty big ring. Um, and I I was hurting myself. I had some needle nose pliers in there. I had all sorts of stuff. I could not get this off. So I just ordered a uh, Nipex brand. It's spelled with a K at the beginning there. I hope you can see that. Um, I just grabbed this one on Amazon and I'm hoping that this one is just standard enough, straight up, uh, what I need. So we're going to give this a try. Otherwise, I don't know what I'm going to do. So let's get this in there. Easy peasy. All right, so definitely do not try to do this with the um, regular like auto parts store uh, wrenches here. They're just so flimsy. Nip X brand. I just grabbed these on Amazon. I think they were like 30 bucks. I honestly spent two hours trying to get this thing off with the standard ones. Could not get it. Um, this one, first try, super easy, pulled right off. So um, I'll go ahead and put a link in the uh, description if you want to go grab these on Amazon. All right, so now we'll continue on. So I'm going to loosen this up. Now that we have the snap ring off of there, we should be able to take this out, put the new spring in there, and keep moving forward. Stupid snap ring delayed me a whole weekend. I had to wait for a new one to be delivered. Let's go ahead and take this all the way off. All right, there we go. All right, take off our clamp press there. Snap ring comes off. All right, now this guy. I'm going to slide this off. Again, I made a mark on this um, because on the splines, I hope you can see here, there's a, a portion that it has to line up with here. Um, so just go ahead and take a mark so that when you put that back on, um, it'll line up well. I put a mark here on the shaft and then also on this piece here. I'm going to take the spring out here. And here you can see the lower carrier for the spring there. And take off... Um, flip this around, and again, I'm taking off these these rollers here. Let me turn this around. You can see there's a huge flat spot right on top of this. So to take these rollers out, um, there's a little pin that runs right through here, and then it comes out the bottom side. Um, so you use a, a punch here, and these are actually, it's a part of a, um, it's for gun maintenance. Um, got this on Amazon also. I didn't have anything that would work well for this. So I went ahead and grabbed this. This is like nine bucks on Amazon. Um, so you barely have room to get in here it's at a slight angle um, but just put, put this in here and then you'll um, push that through with your hammer and then this should just slide right out and then we'll put the new roller on push it back in and then um, push the pin back through as well so we'll go ahead and do that now there we go just a little pin set that aside pull my punch out all right so now that we've got the pins punched out of both sides I'm gonna go ahead and just take a flathead screwdriver, pry these rollers out. All right, so now we got the pin out. That's what that looks like. Now that we have these roller pins out, I'm gonna go ahead and slide off, slide these parts off of each other, and then we can wipe that off. Got some rag. I'll wipe that down. All right, so we got this cleaned up, ready to put these uh, pins back in. 
These are my new rollers. Um, I'll install this with a flat side. One of this side is flat and one has a bevel in it. So flat side against the head of the pin. On the pin, there is a flat portion to the head and that is going to be pointing up towards the engine where the shaft is. So as we install it, a flat portion of the pin will be pointed up and make sure that the hole in our pin is also aligned with the hole that we'll have to run the, the roller pin through as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide this in here. All right. I can go ahead and put the pin back through to hold our roller pin in. All right, you can see in here, this is where we were punching those pins back in. Um, now we're ready to go ahead and reassemble. We will first put in the uh, spring cup down in here and put in our new spring from EPI. That should seat right in there, nice and flat. This, there is one spot here where there's a tooth missing. That's where we wanna make sure that that lines up with the splines on here, right there. Like we did at the beginning, is I put a mark on here as well as on the shaft and that'll help us line that up. Put our snap ring in. We will go ahead and put our snap ring back on. And just make sure that that's seated in there nicely. Then we can go ahead and back this off. So now we can take our helix and go ahead and slide this on here. Now, if your, uh, if your holes don't line up perfectly here, um, I actually had to grab the shaft here and you can just hold down um, the clutches here and then just spin the shaft a little bit to get these rollers to pivot and then that will allow this to, to line up. So I was afraid that I had installed this incorrectly, these two pieces together, but you're actually able to just grab on to this and rotate it a little bit. So not a big deal, um, you may need to do that. Now we're going to go ahead and reinstall these four little guys and here I'm going to put a little bit of the blue Loctite on there before I put it in and then we'll get them tightened down. We're good to go on this guy and we've already done the primary so we can go ahead and reinstall these and just wipe this down real quick with some brake cleaner. Um, so now we're going to slide on our secondary clutch. Thread this in. This large flathead in here so that it'll hit the spline right there. We're doing 40 foot pounds. All right, there we go. So that worked pretty well. So if you have a large um, uh, screwdriver or something like that that you can wedge in here, wedge in here, and then just prop it up against one of the splines there, then back to the frame here. That seemed to work pretty well for taking it off as well as reinstall. Now that's tightened down, I'll go ahead and put the belt on and then we'll put on the primary. You go ahead and make sure that the letters on this are reading left to right. Go ahead and just get this started a little bit. Put this over. Pull it back in here. This one's going to be tightened down to 95 foot pounds. Pull off of my jack to slide through here. Being careful not to hit this portion, but to slide straight through here. And then supporting that up against part of the frame. So we'll put that in there, and then we're going to torque that down to 95 foot pounds. Feels like about 80. Oh, closer than I thought. Alright, there's 95. And we are good to go, guys. Alright, let's get this guy slid out of here. As you're doing this, make sure that you haven't lost the seal in here. Sometimes that can pop off with the cover. So just make sure that that's still on there. Slide this right back on, and go ahead and tighten this up. And then we have this little bracket up here. We'll go ahead and tighten this back on. So now it's time to swing this shock back into place. All right, jacks off. 
see how this clutch works. All right, guys. So just took it out for the first test drive, and um, definitely improved. Must much less jerky on the starts. Um, I didn't notice a crazy amount of like increased power, um, but it did feel like it was just a much smoother acceleration. Um, especially, I was just test riding it on an asphalt, and so that's when it gets really jerky on the starts. So um, honestly, I was pretty impressed with that. So overall, the EPI clutch kit for my RZR 1000 XP four seater, uh, it's 2015. Pretty happy with it, pretty easy install. Um, I watched a couple YouTube videos and um, there weren't a whole lot of like individuals doing it. It was mostly businesses and stuff, so I wanted to provide one of my own. Um, so that's why I went ahead and did this. And I also wanted to share that, so the tools that I got was the clutch compression uh, like clamp tool. I found that really, really useful. It's really expensive for what it is, um, but you'll use it a lot during the install. And so I found it pretty beneficial. Um, I also got the clutch puller tool, uh, which was really handy. And honestly, yeah, it was, it was pretty straightforward. I had to order a couple of parts like the uh, uh, punch to get the little roller pins out. And then I also had to order a larger snap ring wrench um, for pliers because the ones I had were just too flimsy. I was able to use most of my own tools. It's pretty easy. Um, I'm happy with it. Again, the reason I got EPI versus some of the others like the Dalton kit is that I know that I'm not going to be making a whole lot of adjustments or setting changes to it. Um, I don't do any crazy, crazy driving, so I figured, you know, a one size fit all would probably be better for me. And so as I keep driving, I'll definitely let you know if, if I experience anything I don't like, if anything gives out. But so far, I think it'll be what I want. Pretty easy install. Um, took me longer than expected. Uh, just because I had to order in some new, to new tools to get it done. But overall, happy with it. I uh, hope this was useful. Comment, subscribe, like, um, reach out if you have any questions. Um, but for now, I am going to enjoy my RZR, take it down to Sand Hollow State Park in Utah next weekend, and we will give it a try, see if we burn anything up. Um, but looking forward to a good time. Thanks, guys.